you talked about one interesting difference also between the sort of uh, the Guillaume the Gill uh, front end and the uh, bass by Jazz's back end is the communication styles mm. also that you were exploring different ways of um, communicating that can be more viral yeah. in the way that we communicate in the 21st century. Also the movement that you mentioned that you started, it's not just a meme account, but there's also a, a name to it called Effective Accelerationism, EAC, a play, a resistance to the effective altruism movement also an interesting one that I'd love to talk to you about the tensions there. Mm. Okay, and so then there was a merger, a get get merge on the personalities uh, recently without your consent, like you said. Uh, some journalists figured out that you're one and the same. Maybe you could talk about that experience. First of all, like what what's the story of, of uh, the merger of the two? Right, so I wrote the manifesto uh, with my co-founder of EAC, uh, an account named Base Lord, still anonymous, luckily, um, and hopefully forever. So it's based Buff Jezos and and based like Bayes, Bayesian, like Bayes, Bayes Lord, like yeah. Bayesian, Bayesian Lord, Bayes, yeah. Bayes Lord. Okay, and so we should say from now on, we'll, when you say EAC, you mean E slash ACC, which stands for Effective Accelerationism. That's right. And you're referring to a manifesto written on, uh, I guess, Substack. Yeah. Are you also Bayes Lord? No. Okay, it's a different person. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, there you go. Um, Wouldn't it be funny if I'm Bayes Lord? <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> so originally wrote the manifesto around the same time as I founded uh, this company. And I worked at Google X or just... X now, or Alphabet X now that there's another X. Um, and there, you know, the baseline is sort of secrecy, right? Uh, you, you, you can't talk about what you work on, even with other Googlers uh, or externally. And so that was kind of deeply ingrained in my way to do things, especially in, in deep tech that, you know, has geopolitical impact, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I was being secretive about what I was working on. There was no correlation between my company and my main identity publicly. And then not only did they correlate that, they also correlated my main identity and this account. Mm -hmm. So I think the fact that they had doxed the whole Guillaume complex um, and they were, the journalists, you know, reached out to actually my investors. Uh, which is pretty scary. Uh, you know, when you're a startup entrepreneur, you don't really have bosses except for your investors, right? Um, and uh, my investors ping me like, hey, this this is gonna come out. They've they've figured out everything. What are you, what are you gonna do, right? Um, and so I think at first they had a first reporter on the Thursday and they didn't have all the pieces together, but then they looked at their notes across the organization and they censor fused their notes and now they had way too much. Uh, and that's when I got worried because they said it was of public interest. And in general- Like when, how you said sensor fused. <laughs> like it's some giant neural network operating in a distributed <laughs> way. We should also say that the journalists used, I guess at the end of the day, audio-based analysis of voice. Yeah. Comparing voice of what talks you've given in the past and then, uh, voice on um, X spaces. Yep. Okay, so, uh, and that, that's where the, primarily the match was, happened. Okay, continue. continue. The match, Sorry. but you know, they, they scraped, uh, you know, SEC filings. Uh, they looked at my private Facebook account uh, and so on. So they, they, did, they did some digging. Originally I thought that doxing was illegal, right? Um, but there's this weird threshold when it becomes of public interest to know someone's identity. And those were the keywords that sort of like ring the alarm bells for me when they said, because I had just reached 50K followers, allegedly that's of public interest. And so mm -hmm. where, where do we draw the line? When is it legal to, to dox someone? The word dox, 
Hmm. Maybe you can educate me. I thought doxing generally refers to if somebody's physical location is found out, meaning like where they live. Hmm. So we're referring to the more general concept of revealing private information that you don't want revealed is what you mean by doxing. I think that, you know, for the reasons we listed before, uh, having an anonymous account is a really powerful way to keep the powers that be in check. Um, you know, we were ultimately speaking truth to power, right? I think a lot of executives and AI companies really cared what our community thought um, about any move they may take. And now that, you know, my identity is revealed, now they know where to apply pressure to silence me or maybe the community. And to me, that's that's really unfortunate um, because, again, it's so important for us to have freedom of speech, which induces freedom of thought um, and and freedom of information propagation, right, on social media, which thanks to Elon purchasing uh, Twitter, now X, uh, we, we have that. Um, and so to us, you know, we wanted to call out certain maneuvers um, being done by the incumbents in AI as not what it may seem on the surface, right? We were calling out how certain proposals might be useful for regulatory capture, right? And how uh, the doomerism uh, mindset was maybe instrumental to those ends. And I think, you know, we should have the right to point that out um, and just have the ideas that we put out evaluated for themselves, right? That ultimately that's why I created an, on an anonymous account. It's to have my ideas evaluated for themselves, uncorrelated from my track record, my job, or, or status from uh, having done th things in the past. And, and to me, start an account from, from zero to a large following uh, in a way that wasn't dependent on my identity and or achievements, you know, that was, that was very fulfilling, right? Uh, it's kind of like new game plus in a video game. You restart the video game with your knowledge of how to beat it, maybe some tools, but you restart the video game from scratch, right? And um, I think to have a truly efficient marketplace of ideas where we can evaluate ideas, however off the beaten path they are, we need the freedom of expression. And I think that anonymity um, and, and pseudonyms are very crucial to having that efficient marketplace of ideas for us to find the, the optima of all sorts of ways to organize ourselves. If we can't discuss things, how are we gonna converge on the best way to do things? So it, it, was, it was disappointing to hear that I was getting doxxed and I wanted to get in front of it um, because I had a responsibility for 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 my company, um, and so I, you know, we ended up disclosing uh, that we're running a company, some of the leadership, um, and uh, essentially, yeah, uh, I, I told the world that I was uh, Beth Jesus uh, because they they had me cornered at that point. So to you, it's fundamentally unethical. Like, uh, so one is unethical for them to do what they did, but also, do you? Think think, not just your case, but in a general case, is it good for society? Is it bad for society to uh, remove the cloak of anonymity? Or is it case by case? I think it could be quite bad. Like I said, if anybody who speaks truth to power and, and sort of starts uh, a movement or an uprising against the incumbents, against those that usually control the flow of information. If anybody that reaches a certain threshold gets um, doxxed and thus the traditional apparatus has ways to apply pressure on them to suppress their speech, I I think that's, you know, that's a speech suppression mechanism, an idea suppression complex, as uh, Eric Weinstein would, would say. <laughs>